So you're considering ordering a Factory 5 kit. For a long time I did the same until I finally pulled the trigger in 2015 and ordered a Mark IV base kit. And needless to say, I learned a lot along the way. How you expect your build to go turns out to be very different retrospectively. Kinda like when you draft your fantasy football team or you buy a Roomba. While you'll undoubtedly have a lot of questions, you'll quickly learn there are a lot of opinions out there on how these kits should go together. I like to think of the kit as a life-size Lego set, with the caveat being, it can kill you. Another difference is there's no exact assembly procedure, only a guide in the form of an assembly manual which ships with the kit. As you get into your build, you'll soon realize there's more than one way to skin a cat. I put this video together to share what I learned, including my opinions. What's that saying again? Uh, opinions are like ass- My first advice to you is to purchase some tools to complement your build if your budget allows. Start to finish, the most useful tool in my build turned out to be a set of Coleco fasteners. After initially using C-clamps to line up the first aluminum panels, I borrowed a set from a friend and I never looked back. Coleco serve as a temporary fastener when you rivet two materials together. They come in all different sizes, and given there are about 1,000 to 1,500 rivets in a typical factory 5 kit, you'll put these to good use. So next, while completely optional for a typical build, I put both my metal mill and lathe to good use during my build. Specifically, I modified a lot of parts that didn't fit that well, or even made some new parts. Obviously, there's a learning curve and more significant cost with these additions to a home shop. But in hindsight, I wish I would have purchased them when I ordered my kit. I'll add that you'll find numerous other uses for them once your build is complete. The last general tip I have is at times you're going to need some help, specifically with the big parts like the engine and the body. When I was putting my engine in, I ran into a bind and needed an extra set of hands. And needless to say, I lost a lot of points with the engine install. The biggest challenge of my entire build was definitely the exhaust system. The reason it was such a challenge is each engine and body and frame is a little different and while Factory 5 makes every effort for things to line up, the reality is, is you're going to have to tweak some things when you put the kit together. For my build I had to modify the engine mounts and the transmission support bracket. This was so I could tilt and angle the engine to get the headers to line up with the body cutouts for the exhaust. And then what really sucked is I had to modify the exhaust brackets to meet the side pipes because they were then sitting too high. And those brackets, they're case hardened and I think I blew through two or three uh, cobalt drill bits to get holes in them. After all that, the drive shaft angle is no longer correct. So that's something I still need to fix and it's on my to-do list. So even though there's a lot of pain and anguish, I think this is the only way to go with these cars. I mean, side pipes, they, they look awesome. Painting, I think, gets a bad rap with these cars or any car. That it's this impossible task that you shouldn't even bother taking on, and I fully disagree with that. The equipment I used, I purchased at Harbor Freight, and when it came to actual painting, uh, I think 90% of the battle is prep and patience. The biggest mistake I made with painting though was using white primer. Big no-no with a black or dark base coat. And the issue is, is while it looks nice and the paint lays down great, when you go to wet sand it's really easy to sand through it and I ended up having to respray a couple times. Now that the painting's all said and done, I definitely wouldn't hesitate to take on a challenge like this again and maybe I can get a job at Mako. Arguably the most critical interior feature on your build is going to be the cup holders. Much like peanut butter is to chocolate, this car is perfectly complemented on a weekend drive with a beverage. Unfortunately, I made the error of undersizing my cup holders, and while frustrating, I've been able to make do on coffee runs. Now to all you period correct elitist aficionados, I don't care if the originals don't have cup holders. I want some in my car, and that's why they're there. Next, the radio. Real simple here. Don't waste your time because you're never going to hear it. Me personally, I like the side pipes. You know, the engine sounds good, and it's really part of the experience of driving a Cobra. If you do decide to install radio, this is what you're going to hear. Hey Bob, Bob, turn it up! I, I can't hear my UP40! Really Obviously, the dashboard is a crucial piece of hardware where function trumps aesthetics. And while the rat rod craze lives on, 
Riding around in an unfinished build is only so cool for so long. So the Factory 5 kit ships with a padded vinyl dashboard cover and I spent a lot of time to install it. And for me everything went bad early in the summer when the vinyl started to pull away from the foam backing. Solution for me, vinyl wrap. So this stuff is cheap, you can find it on Amazon and it's very easy to apply. I think the best part about it is if you don't like how it looks or you mess something up, it's real easy to take off also. So historically I think this stuff has gotten a bad rap. That's the kind of thing you put on a crappy car to make it look better. But uh, you know, now that I've tried it, I won't hesitate to do it again. So if you want an alternative to the vinyl dash, you know, search online. There's all kinds of different textures and it really gives a unique look to your car. So maybe I've been lucky, but over the years I've worked on a lot of cars and done a lot of cooling systems, and I've really never had any issues with flex fans or brass core radiators. For my build, I used the AFCO aluminum radiator supplied by Factory 5 and the electric fan that came with the kit. So given the car only weighed 2,200 pounds um, and the aluminum core was just massive, I really wasn't too concerned about cooling capacity. So I was wrong, and I'm pretty sure you could fuse hydrogen with a 5.0 that's running rich. It's absolutely critical that you have good airflow under the hood to cool these cars. I actually made the problem worse when I fabricated an aluminum panel to go between the body and the top of the radiator core. This further reduced airflow, and my carburetor then started to vapor lock. With a hood scoop or some hood vents, I don't think you'd have this issue but I wanted to keep a flat hood on my build. Big picture, make sure you have some airflow under the hood with your build. The e-brake. So this thing has been nothing but a headache for me. So you should know that the cable routing isn't great and the caliper springs are not strong. And on my build I actually seized one of the rotors in the rear when the cable won't return into place. If you put one in you're going to have to spend some time making sure that it works correctly. The last thing I wanted to share with you is one of the mistakes I made under the hood. I chose to rebuild a Ford Explorer motor and the later 5.0 motors moved the water pump pulleys and crank pulleys closer to the engine block. The problem with this is virtually none of the aftermarket bracket systems for these motors fit that location. If you're one of the few oddballs out there like me who chooses to build a Ford Explorer motor for this car, my advice to you is don't waste any time with these pulleys. I eventually broke down and bought a Fox style timing cover and water pump, but I think the lesson learned is I should have done that right at the start. Also, belt wrap. If you choose to add power steering to your motor, you're going to have to buy a different belt than the one that comes with the kit. So the things I shared with you today are just a few of the challenges I had along the way. I also want to add that Every one of these builds is unique, so the problems I had might not be the same as the problems you're going to have. Hopefully what I shared with you today, it's going to help you with your build. So why don't you leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and thanks for watching.